Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're getting Christmassy and creating dynamic tinsel in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by CGShortcuts.Courses, our online training platform where you can take your motion graphic skills to the next level. We've got an ever-growing range of courses in the same straight-to-the-point, easy-to-follow format of our YouTube videos. Each course also comes with loads of project files and downloadable assets, as well as support directly from the course instructor. Our YouTube subscribers get 5% off all courses with the code YouTube5, so check it out today. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create a spline for our tinsel. So we'll come up here and we're going to just sketch it out with the sketch tool. And this might be easier to do in a different view. So we'll middle mouse click and go into the top view. And we want this to be five meters long. And each one of these squares is one meter. So we're going to start about here and we're just going to draw out a line. And don't worry if it's a bit wiggly. We just want to take it to about there. So we've got one, two, three, four full squares and two half squares. So we're five meters long. And now if we zoom into this guy and switch over to the point mode here, you can see we don't have very even points. They're bunched up over here, then over here they're a bit more spread out. But because we're going to be making this dynamic, we want these to be nice and evenly spaced apart. And the easiest way I found to do that is to just click on the spline and down under the object tab, we'll change the intermediate points from adaptive to uniform. And we'll bring this number way down to zero. And now if we right click on our spline and say current state to object, we can see that's created a duplicate so we can delete the original one. And now if we click on this guy, all of those points are nice and evenly distributed. Okay, so let's go back to our perspective view and here's our nice new spline. So now we wanna make this dynamic. So with our spline selected, we'll come up to tags and there's a few different ways you can do this, but we're going to use hair and we wanna go with the spline dynamics tag. And that adds this guy right here. And if we hit play now, it's just going to drop straight down. So we'll rewind that. We actually wanna lock either end of this spline into place so we can get this to just drop down and hang like tinsel. So we're going to attach each end to some cubes. So let's bring one of those in. And again, it might be easier to do this if we switch views. We'll go over to the top view and grab our scale tool. We also want to switch back to object mode and we just want to scale this down a bit. Something like that. And then we want to move it all the way to the left. And if we zoom in here, you can see I've got the center of that cube pretty close to the end of that spline here. Then we can rename this cube. Let's just call it left. And we'll just zoom out a bit. And we also want one of these cubes over here on the right. So we'll hold down control and we'll just drag this guy out here to make a copy. And we'll call this one right. Then we'll just scooch back to our perspective view to check that out. Here's our right cube on the right and our left cube on the left. Okay, so back here again, we'll switch back to the point mode and we'll start with the left cube. If we grab our spline, we want this point right here to be attached to our left cube. So with it selected, we'll come up to tags and back to the hair tags. And I'm going to bring in a constraint. And we're going to use this constraint to constrain this point to this cube. And you can see here, it's asking for an object to constrain to. So we'll grab our left cube and plonk that in here. Then we've already got the vertex we want to constrain selected. So now we just need to hit set to constrain that to our cube. And now if we go back here and hit play, it swings down like so. So back here again, we're going to do that to our other side as well. So we'll grab this point and with our spline selected, we'll head back up to tags, hair tags and constraint again. And with this new constraint, we're going to grab our right cube and put that into here. And again, we've got that point selected, so we'll hit set. And now if we go back to our perspective view and hit play, 
that's looking good. So now we're going to turn the spline into tinsel. So with our spline selected, we'll come up to simulate here and down to hair objects, we're going to add hair. And when we bring that in, you can see if we zoom in here, we're getting these hairs coming off our spline. And if we were to rewind and play this again, we're getting dynamics on everything as well. And that's looking kind of cool, but it's not looking too much like tinsel. So let's go back to the start and we'll take a look at our hair object up here. Firstly, under the guide section, and the guides are these blue lines showing us where the hairs are going to be. We've currently got 43 of these here in the count, but because we're going for tinsel, we'll probably need a bunch more of these. But you'll notice if we try to take this up, it won't let us. It'll only let us go down. And that's because at the moment, we've got the root set to spline vertex. So I'm guessing there's 43 points along our spline here, which is why we can only have 43 of these. So let's change this. And we've got loads of different options in here, but we want them to be nice and uniformly spaced apart. So we're going to use spline uniform. And that hasn't changed much because we already had our spline points evenly spaced. But now if we come back here and adjust this, we can put in as many as we want. So for now, let's just do a hundred of these guys. And we've also got a setting for segments here, which is how many subdivisions we have in each one of these. But tinsel tends to be pretty straight and not as curly as hair, so we won't need this up so high. So let's just bring that down to four for now. And we also have 100 centimeters in the length here, which is probably a bit too long for tinsel. So let's bring that down as well. I think about 20 should be fine. Okay, we're getting closer. Let's give that a play. All right, so we don't want these going off to one side here. We actually want these guys to be pointing in every direction. So it looks a bit more random. So if we come down to the next section here, we've got the growth settings. At the moment, this is set to normals and the normal direction of these points are pointing out this way, which is why our guides are pointing out that way. So we wanna change this to random. And when you do, you'll notice nothing happens. And even if we rewind this, they're still going off that way. And that's because whenever we make a major change to the growth, we need to come down to the editing section and regrow our hair. So we'll hit that button. And now they're all going off randomly on every angle. And if we give that a play, we're starting to get a bit closer to tinsel. But these are still looking more like hair, so let's try and straighten them up a bit. So we'll rewind that again. And to fix that, we can head over to the dynamic section. And here's all the dynamic settings for our hair. And the setting we wanna to change to keep these a bit more firm so they don't bend so much is actually the rest hold. But before we change that, if we just hit play again, you can see at the moment they're flopping all over the place. But if we bring this up, let's say to 50 and hit play, they're flopping a bit less. And if we bring that right up to maybe 90 and play that back, they're now much stiffer. So it's really up to you how you want your tinsel to look, but generally speaking, there shouldn't be too much bend in there. So I think we could probably get away with something a bit lower, maybe 65, and we'll give that a go. And now they bend just a tiny bit before going straight. Okay, so let's see how these hairs look if we hit render. And it doesn't look anything like what we were just looking at. So what's going on here? Let's try heading over to the hair section. And at the moment, you can see we've got 50,000 hairs and they're all clumping together around those guides, which is why we're getting these weird looking shapes. So rather than just playing around with the count, we actually need to change the root settings and make the hairs more in line with the guides by changing this to as guides. And now if we hit render, we get hairs only where we have guides. However, if we zoom in a bit closer here, we've got another issue. Let's render that again. This doesn't look like tinsel. They look more like spikes or little cone shapes. So we need to replace these with some flat planes. 
And to do that, we need to go over to the Generate tab. And you can see at the moment, the type is set to none. So we just need to change that to flat. And straight away, you can see these are now flat and no longer cone shaped. And if we hit render, we're definitely getting closer, but these are still a bit pointy. So to get rid of this tapering, we can come over to the hair material tag that's been generated with our hair object. And we'll double click on that to open it up down here. Or we could also find the material over here and double click this guy to open it up. And to control the shape of each hair, we can go to the thickness channel. And you can also find that down here as well. And we can see the root is set to one centimeter. And this end here is the root where the hair starts. And this is the tip. So we just need to make sure that these match and we should get a nice rectangular shape. So we'll make that one one centimeter as well. And you can see that update over here. So we can close this and we'll just pull out a bit and give that a render. And now we're almost there. We just want a bunch more of these in here to thicken up our tinsel. So we'll head back to our hair and we might just zoom out a bit. Then under guides, we'll start by bringing the count up, maybe something like a thousand. And you can see how they're all still clumping together because we haven't refreshed this yet. So we just need to go back down here and hit the regrow button. And that's looking better. So we'll give that a render. And that's better, but the tinsel's still looking a bit sparse. So we could just keep cranking this number up, but the more we take this up, the slower the simulation is going to be. And it could also slow down our render quite a bit. But I'll show you a little trick to make this look much denser without slowing things down. If we go over to the hairs tab, we've got this option down here called cloning. And this will allow us to add clones of our original hairs without impacting the simulation. So let's just bring in 10 extra clones for each one of our guides. And you can see that thickening things up already. And we might even bring this up a little bit further. Let's try 12 and we'll render that. And now we're looking more like tinsel. So we'll play that and just frame this up a bit. And we'll see how that looks. So now all we need to do is add a material to this. And you could do that back in the hair material under the color tab, or you can just double click to create a new material over here and apply that to our hair. And you can see that update now. Then we can go into that guy and just grab a different color. Let's maybe go with a nice red color. Then we might give it some reflectance and we'll change that to Beckman and bring the roughness down and the reflection up. Then we'll close that and try another render. And there we go. So we could just zoom out a bit and rewind and give ourselves a few more frames to play with. And now if we hit play, we can actually grab these cubes and move them around a bit to tweak the simulation. And you can just frame this up however you like. And there is your dynamic tinsel. And there's one last cool thing you can do with this. If we come up to the simulate menu, we can also use forces on this. So let's just bring in a turbulence force. And if we rewind and hit play, you might start to see that affecting it. And let's just bring the strength of that up to 50 to make it a bit more obvious. And now we can see that's affecting our hair and it's wriggling around there. But if you want it to affect our spline as well, we just need to come over to our spline dynamics tag and under forces, we can drag that turbulence straight into here. And now that's affecting everything. And we can go back to that guy and maybe just tweak the scale. And there we go. So that's about it for the dynamic tinsel. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And as with all of our tutorials, if you want to get your hands on the full render ready project files, which include all the final lighting materials and octane render settings, you can get them from our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials. You guys are the best. And that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you could leave a like or a dislike. <laughs> 
and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.